say something, I'm giving up on you. Minimalism, we love to love it, we love to critique it, we love to hone it so it makes sense in the actual world. During my sustainability journey, I have learned to differentiate between minimalist aesthetic and minimalism in practice. Minimalism is simply just a curation technique. There are wings of minimalism that can be spiritual, cultural, and yes, some of them are sustainable. The sustainable kind of curation is what we're aiming for here. Minimalism isn't an aesthetic style. We're not aiming to come out looking like Gwyneth Paltrow or Steve Jobs. As nice as they both look and as self-actualizing as I'm sure their styles are or were to them. Now, I totally understand the pull of a capsule wardrobe because its very existence asks the question, how many bits of clothes do we actually need obviously if we're being puritanical the answer is two one outfit to wear one outfit to wash but like past that without completely stripping your life of all versatility and fun and just becoming a cartoon character what is a reasonable amount of clothes. Tiffany Ferguson did this amazing video recently about the wardrobes of the super rich and I was an equal part fascinated and grossed out but I also have this real urge not to try and not to be judgmental <laughs> and this belief that really only we can answer for ourselves how many clothes is too many clothes but also to a certain extent it's personal but i would like to answer that question at some point for myself and a good weather vane for me is and i think quite a universal just fact-based ceiling is we all have one body and 365 days in a year so if we're going to attempt any maths Perhaps that's the place to start. Okay, so according to The Express, m and did this study a couple of years ago um, on Britain's wardrobes, and it claims that the average Britain's wardrobe in the UK has 52 items in it. That seems quite plausible to me, so we're gonna go with it as a hypothetical tally. I imagine the reason you own a lot of clothes is because you don't want to be seen in the same outfit all of the time. Fair play. So if there's 365 days in a year and you have 152 items that will go with at a low ball are all in one, so like a dress or a onesie, no variety that you can do with that item apart from wear it. That would mean you'd only have to wear the item two and a half times a year. Not bad. But let's assume that those are single items, so trousers or tops, skirts, things that can be interchanged and mixed up to make new outfits. And let's go for a low ball. Let's say that each item in your wardrobe only goes with two other things in your wardrobe. That's a very low ball. You'd have to have a really rubbish piece of clothing that only went with two other things that you owned. But let's go for it. 152 times three would mean you have not that. <laughs> Just returned from my maths vortex and realized that that calculation is not only wrong because of that massive number, but wrong because if two items of clothing make an outfit, you can't count that outfit twice. So bear with. Now let's imagine that those 152 items aren't one pieces, they are things that you can wear with other things. So trousers, tops, etc. And perhaps it only goes with, let's say three other things. That's more realistic. Now, if my math is correct, <laughs> means that we have to times that by 1.5 rather than three. Does that make sense? Because it wouldn't be three outfits, it would be half of that because the outfits are the, you see. So then every year you would only have to wear each outfit 1.6 times. You can change halfway through the day most of the time. So what I'm trying to say is mathematically, I have too many clothes. <laughs> So some of the pros I can envision from having a capsule wardrobe permanently. It will probably motivate you to only welcome versatile, long lasting items into your life. Therefore driving down the price of your wardrobe per wear, which is the end game really. Which if practiced more on mass, I imagine would reduce the demand for one-off, wasteful, trendy, impractical pieces. Notice I didn't say statement pieces. I said trendy and one-off. I'm aware that because I love color, a lot of my wardrobe consists of pieces that might be other people's statement items. But I really think that when there's love there, outlandish statement bright items can be sustainable. Nay, 
not only sustainable, bloody wonderful. And that is the hill I'm willing to die on. However, I did have some reservations slash questions I wanted to answer with this experiment. Can you even have a capsule wardrobe if you're not really into neutrals? According to most of the YouTube videos I could find on capsule wardrobes, no. Far be it from me to be the only naysayer, but I reckon I can do it. Secondly, not all capsule wardrobe items are equal, right? So what makes a good item for a capsule wardrobe, apart from white t-shirts, which are, let's say, a personal boundary for me. I don't want them in my life, there, get them away. And my third question was, I realised that decision fatigue is a thing, and I'm glad that capsule wardrobes help with that, but for my purposes, capsule wardrobes only really seem worth it if they reduce the amount of items we are inspired to get new. I was wondering, with this capsule wardrobe experiment, if I just get really bored and then not want the items anymore? Or would I feel like this experiment could last longer? Only time will tell. So once I had decided that I was going to do the experiment and the questions I wanted to answer with it, I had to assemble my men. <laughs> Things that I had hunches on that would work were block colours, like these, especially if they're primary colours, there's no reason that these things can't replace the usual grey or white or cream items that are advised in your average bland minimalist wardrobe. I also thought if I was going to incorporate pattern, it would have to have either a black or white base. For example, a dress like this that has loads of colours but has black as its background. This pair of dungarees that while garish and bright, has a black base. And this rainbow skirt that has a myriad of colours on it, but most frequently has a black stripe. But I also threw in stuff like this and this because I didn't let that rule stop me. I thought it best to include jeans that had a very wide gate for tucking, especially when I wanted to turn dresses into tops. And the same with skirts. The more circular, the better, so that I can tuck. And when I did choose dresses, I made sure they were ones that worked as bottom and tops on their own as well. Like this one. Other than that, I simply just picked clothes that I loved the most from my wardrobe. Stuff that I already felt really comfortable and confident in. And because of lockdown, only stuff that I could sit down for long periods of time in. Really, how much of my day do I spend standing right now? realistically. Just a quick note that most of the stuff I feature in this video is secondhand, or even if I bought it firsthand, it was bought years ago and definitely no longer available, but I know some of you are keen Depop detectives. I'll leave as much information as is humanly possible in the description so that I can assist your Sherlock Holmes Depop search. I decided to pick 30 items because that was the most common number I could seem to come up with when it came to capsule wardrobes. Like I've seen capsule wardrobes that have 70 items and I've seen capsule wardrobes that have 10. 30 sounded like the most doable kind of number for me, a beginner. So that is where I began. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the team. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now here's reality. Lena, did it work? So yes, I did 
end up wearing the outfits for 30 days total. I actually knew at this point that we were gonna be moving house and we put quite a lot of our stuff in storage. So I actually couldn't wear much more than those 30 clothes after the experiment either. I actually ended up making that the basis of my wardrobe for about three months. I added bits to it from Depop. I did have some extra bits that I kept with me that I didn't use during that 30 days that I reintroduced into my wardrobe. But to be honest, it's kind of an anti-climax because I don't have that much to say about the process because it was totally fine. <laughs> I always had something clean and something I was excited to wear and I think that's down to the choices I made when I was working out what to include in the wardrobe. I had lots of different textures, lots of different colours and almost everything made me feel really comfortable. Thinking about it that's probably because everything I picked adheres to the rules that I talked about in my life and thought about clothes in your 20s video. Here are some of the outfits I put together but whilst I haven't really been dressing any differently during the pandemic, I still probably haven't been demanding as much of it or stretching it as far as I normally would in those distant normal times. So I decided to put it through its paces. At the end of the experiment, I set myself some scenarios and tried to work out from the 30 items the perfect things to wear. So this is gonna be for a networking catch-up Zoom call with some ex-colleagues, maybe an ex-boss, people in the industry. I think a loose-fitting jumpsuit is probably what I would call a staple of any wardrobe. I look like I remember the Zoom call was happening. The earrings say, I'm all grown up, please pay me money. But I'm also essentially just wearing pajamas. <laughs> This outfit is nipping to Tesco and saying subliminally to your neighbours that yes, I may have cried into my Cocoa Pops this morning, but I am still incredibly glamorous and lockdown is not getting to me at all. I feel like these patterns almost match. They're like a kind of casual, oh, I don't really care. And to make sure people know that I know that the clash is intentional, I got some of the green from the skirt and echoed it with my headband. Okay, this would be my hypothetical, potentially socially distanced first date outfit. The lipstick says, I remember this was happening. The dungarees say, I'm an incredibly fun person. And the top says, but I have no need to prove that to you. <laughs> also, yes, this is a slightly summer outfit because first dates are currently illegal and I'm guessing that the sun will be out by the time that they're above board. And this outfit is hypothetical first party once this is over. Manifest it, manifest it. Obviously got the glittery skirt, which has had more use during this capsule wardrobe experiment than I thought. It really does cheer me up and I wear it casually quite a lot. Gotta show off those lockdown split ends, augment them with some big earrings. And my flowy gung-ho dress is making an appearance as a top. One of the questions at the beginning of the experiment was what makes a good capsule wardrobe teammate? What are the qualities in an item that make it rewearable, flexible, versatile? Now my learnings are my learnings only and may or may not apply to your style, but here are the things that I wore the most and wore the least. So one of the things I definitely wore the most was this wrap dress. I talked in my lies about clothes video about why I think wrap items are incredible investment pieces. The fact that I could just shove this on and instantly feel like I was kind of holding things together was great. It was great for layering. It was great as a top with a skirt. It was great as a skirt with a top on top of it. I loved it. These black dungarees that until this experiment had been kind of a little bit forgotten in my wardrobe really made a comeback during the 30 days. I found that it was kind of a chameleon and kind of just turned into whatever the vibe of the top I wore under it was. And I especially love this kind of black on black kind of witchy combination, which I definitely wouldn't have thought of if it wasn't for this experiment. I wore both of these gung-ho dresses quite a lot during the 30 days, but as predicted, the one with the black background did the best. I was tucking it into things, I was pulling it out of things. I was wearing it with multiple different colored tights underneath. It was a firm favorite. And then finally, my other leopard print item. I love leopard print. It's a neutral. That's just gospel at this point. But these loose fitting ones felt kind of elegant, but also incredibly fun. And I realized that they go with literally every top in this capsule wardrobe. Things that didn't work. This beautiful silky top, which I really love, but because it's a body, <laughs> nobody could be bothered. It's a really elegant piece and I'm definitely gonna keep it, but I wonder if there is a way that I could alter it so it's not a body because 
I hate them. And I also realized because this is so oversized on me, I couldn't put it under dungarees. It felt kind of overwhelming with a lot of my skirts because a lot of my skirts are very flowy. And I just didn't wear it as much as I expected to wear it considering how much I love it. And then the other one, and I guess is emblematic of a side effect of this experiment that I didn't see coming, was this skirt that I've had for years. And always when I was thinking about assembling the wardrobe, I was like, well, obviously I have to have this in it. It's one of my, the biggest loves of my life. But the realization was I just didn't reach for it. It didn't go with the other stuff in my wardrobe that I love. I felt like some of my other skirts were a little bit more exciting to wear, a little bit more comfy. Now I have a lot more circle skirts. This one seems kind of underwear because it's not quite as big as some of my other stuff. Over the years, the twirl factor has become increasingly important to me. And it's got a little rip here that I didn't get around to fixing. And maybe that's because I don't care as much as I thought I did. So I'm gonna wash this and potentially give it away to a friend or sell it on Depop because I don't think I'm getting as much joy from it as I used to. And I think that it might serve the world better being put back in circulation with other clothes. Somebody will love you more than I do. <laughs> Which at one point in my life felt unimaginable, but here we are. Say something, I'm giving up on you. So what have I learned? <laughs> I'm teachable as I am. I learned that I wear less items than I thought I did. In practice, I gravitate towards old loves <laughs> and things that renew my interest in said old loves. Some of my current items are way more versatile than I thought they were. This challenge definitely encouraged me to match make new couples, do an Emma, make the unexpected love happen, and appreciate the stuff I already had. And three, it made me realize that some of the clothes that are in my wardrobe that I really love actually should probably go back in circulation into the world to be enjoyed by by others. If we're trying not to make new clothes, we need to get as much of the unworn clothes in our wardrobe back in circulation so other people can get new stuff and enjoy them. So unexpectedly, I'm saying goodbye to that rainbow skirt. Am I gonna keep doing a capsule wardrobe? Probably not. Maybe seasonally. And I might expand the number a little bit because I really like the creativity of creating something a little bit more dynamic. So maybe like 50 items and I change it every season. I do also love changing up the stuff that I own and I consider it part of my own kind of joy and creativity. So I'm definitely gonna keep adding to my second hand wardrobe, but I feel more informed now about whether I'll actually wear an item, what kind of things make me wear things, what kind of attributes in a piece of clothing make me wear it. What I do know is that when I do get the rest of my clothes out of storage, there is going to have to be a reckoning. <laughs> So overall, a very, very worthwhile experiment. I'm feeling smug. So there you are, that is my capsule wardrobe experiment. Have you ever tried this? Would you like to? As somebody who loves color, do you also feel nervous to try these kind of internet trends? And now would you, having seen this? I've seen words like quiet maximalism batted around or luxe minimalism. And there may be terms that I could get behind now. I'm allowed to have my color. I'm allowed to have my eccentric pieces and still be sustainable. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in watching more clothes videos for me, they're up here. These videos are free to watch, but they are made possible by the people in the Gumption Club who tip me per video to make sure they keep happening. And if you'd like to keep up with me in between uploads, you can sign up to my newsletter, which comes out on Fridays, or you can follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. Frog's not out.